Nice. How are you How doing? Are you doing? All right. Yeah, I'm really good. I love the, what I've seen of the show so far. So good. <laughs> oh, good, man. Good. How many episodes do you watch? Uh, four so far. Um, halfway uh, through. Yeah, no, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with. I mean, because obviously it's on telly now. So yeah. usually when I do interviews um, with people about shows or films, it's always in advance of it coming out. So it's always kind of anticipating what the reaction mm. could be. But we know what the reaction is. People love it. The reviews have been fantastic. Audiences are really enjoying it. You must be thrilled that it's been react. The reaction has been what it has been. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There were a lot of people putting um, so much hard work into it. You know what I mean, so I'm very proud that it can uh, be praised in the way that it is being. It's uh, yeah, it makes me very grateful, man. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, even when you make something that you're very proud of and you know it's good, is it always a surprise when people respond to it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's just like I suppose like you know, like musicians make the music and then they got to show it to their friends and it could be mm. could be trash. Mm. you obviously know that like it's so special to you and you've been working on it for so long you don't know how special it is going to be to other people when they see it do you know what I mean so it's a big relief not that I ever doubted its abilities mm. just a relief to get it out there and have it seen in a similar way how, how, how we all saw it doing it do you know what I mean everyone were really close to the script they knew it, knew it were a special story doing it so yeah and did you watch the um the opening episode? I mean, because obviously you've been quite a fair few sort of TV shows. Now, when they air on that sort of first night, do you sit down and and watch it, or is it something that you feel quite close to anyway? And you might have been to cast and crew screenings and stuff. Uh, to be fair, I'm not in country at the moment, but I think I would have sat down. Uh, so I usually do just sit down for half an hour and give it give it a watch on the first like first release although it's something i don't really like doing some it can be to miss sometimes watching yourself but um yeah i'd have definitely probably sat down with my mom in the living room for the first uh for the first one but watching myself i don't i can't really do it too much definitely not throughout the full series but i've already i've i've, I've watched the full season before it came out a couple of months before it came out luckily so uh i might have to I might have to sit and binge it because there's some uh things that i forgot People showing yeah. me bits that I forgot. Yeah. Did your mum? Did your mum enjoy it anyway when she watched it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think she's finished it yet, but she's. Uh, all my family's get, getting good responses. To be fair, my nana, she texts me. And my dad were watching it last night, and my mum's been watching it today. So I think they're all enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah, because I I'm not a binge I'm not a binge person. I I, I tend to watch things uh, I like the old fashioned kind of one episode a week sort of stuff. But I sat down yesterday to think, oh, should I you know I watch some episodes ahead of this interview today? And I just watched four back to back just straight away, which was all I think yeah. was available to me. So I mean, I would have gone even further if, if I had it available. So are you a binge watcher? And what do you think makes good bingeable telly? Oh, good bingeable telly. It's got to be like a a brilliant last ten minutes of a uh, whatever it is that's going on. Mm. Like um, I used to binge Game of Thrones like mad, mad. The first like time I got introduced to binging was like when I was watching Breaking Bad on Netflix, mm. and it was when the episode ends and then like the other episode, like the next episode, like starts reloading for you. Yeah. <laughs> like that that opened a completely new door to me. I am a bit of a binger, yeah. but um, but no, I am. I am uh, I haven't binge watched something since Game of Thrones, I don't think. Yeah, sometimes yeah. the decisions made for you when they just start playing the next episode. When you're just lying on the sofa, you're like, the remote's over there, it's starting now, I might as well just yeah. go in. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's like three o'clock in the morning, but you may as well bang <laughs> But this is, um, um, I thought somewhere by, I mean, it was so, like, it was really funny at times and very quite warm. And yet the story is quite heartbreaking and quite profoundly moving. It deals with quite tough themes. Tonally, it's a really tough thing for anyone to get right, but they've they've managed it. They've knocked it out of the park. But did you get a sense when reading the script how it would eventually come across, or when you sort of first watched it? But you were also sitting there thinking, "Please tell me this all <laughs> all went to plan." Well, uh, before it came out, you mean? Well, yeah, I just meant because it's so many different tones, so many different themes that play. It's because because it, when I'm watching it, I'm kind of laughing and it's funny and it's sad and all yeah. these kind of things come together. I just wondered if you got that from from the script. Yeah, well, reading it, I, I got, like, serious, like, this channel's, um, it's obviously not done anything like this before in, in, in a script way, but, like, the vibe way and, and how, how it was getting shot, like, you, when, when you see things on the monitor, like, little clips and stuff of how it gets shot, you, it, uh, 
realigns your expectations in it, do you know what I mean? So I always kind of knew it was gonna were gonna hit. Like the idea itself, the concept itself were too strange for people to not be like invested in, do you know what I mean? When they watched it, I thought anyway. Yeah. Um but usually with stuff like that, if I like it, um I expect everyone else to as well, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Even if it in the case, but yeah, I, I I enjoyed it so. Yeah. I I expected a good reception, but not as good as it, it got. You know what I mean? So it's pleasant surprise. Has it got to a point now, like, because in your career, because obviously there's that kind of um, when you first start off in any industry, exposure is such a big part of. Of, of of the job you know it's, it's kind of like you want to choose projects that are really good that challenge you that, that have great stories and great characters but at the same time you do need to take things and put yourself out there to kind of show what you can do as an actor um as it do you think it has kind of got to a point a little bit in your career now where you can think less about the exposure side and really just chase down the really good characters and the really good projects now you're kind of more established i suppose yeah yeah well i suppose it's next I've always felt uh, very lucky to be in the position that I'm in. So for me, it's never really been about exposure or all like that. Just doing what um, what I get, really. Do you know what I mean? Like getting what getting what you're given mm. and being grateful for it. Do you know what I mean? Which I think I always still will be. Uh, hopefully that just I can keep like working hard and the exposure will come from that anyway. Do you know what I mean? Well, that's my that's my that's what I I, I hope really anyway. Mm. To just hit it hard and and try to smash everything that I do and then that it'll come from that, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I never really thought too much on what, about what I take and, like, I don't think I'll ever really do soaps in that aspect, but, like, on on uh, stuff that I pick and choose, it's not really got to that point yet. I'll, I'll, hopefully it will do. So is your decision process, is it quite instinctive, do you think? Can you tell quite quickly if this is a character or a project you want to you wanna take on? Um. Yeah, 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 definitely. There's a lot of auditions that I do that I... I you don't have a good no, not a lot of auditions but like the auditions that you do where you don't have a good vibe for you can really tell when you get put in an audition room where you like it do you know what i mean yeah like the comparison is is uh pretty seeable yeah um i took go back to when i was talking about the kind of tone of the the show i loved the music and the kind of feel to it all the kind of the old kind of songs you know the kind of joe stafford and the kind of the whole the, all the, re- the reference points to charlie chaplin and things like that did you would you were you made aware of the kind of music and because that, that that a lot of the gentle tone to the show comes from that music i think did you know when you were filming it that that day were going to craft it in that way or was that quite a when you watched it was that quite a nice surprise as well to hear the the sound of it yeah something? no i think mm. yeah i think that was quite a, like a coarse thing and, and they did it really beautifully actually i think the only time i really heard music is the funeral scene mm. where we're all like at, at danny's dad's funeral and that's the only time um, one of them old tunes got played out loud for us, really. Mm-hmm. But um, if it does something to you, it brings like the, the the energy right down. You know what I mean? But no, I think they've uh, orchestrated it beautifully, man. I actually don't know who did it. I'll have to I'll have to find the name. Are you uh, are you interested in that period? Yeah. Of all, you know, in terms of music and films, the kind of old black and white kind of you know the sort of twenties, the fifties period. Is it something that you've ever kind of delved into at any, mm-hmm. any stage? Never, right? never once. Not even big, like before this. Never really knew. Who, I knew of Charlie Chaplin and and things like that, but didn't know how um, how big they really were in like film mm. before uh, before I did this. But no, no, I've never, I think the furthest mine goes back. I'm trying to think of black and white films. I think the furthest mine goes back is It's a Wonderful Life. How old is that? I think it's even, I don't think it's twenties or twenties thirties old. Uh, is it? I think yeah, late thirties, early forties. I think that one. Is it? I think so. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the furthest I've got back really. But. Yeah, maybe maybe late forties. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever happens, I'll be watching it at Christmas. I know that. I, I did. I do remember watching old westerns with my granddad. To be fair, yeah. But I don't. I couldn't tell you what they were. They, just, they were just on. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's nineteen forty six. It's a wonderful life. This is a good thing about Zoom interviews. You can quickly just. <laughs> just How did you Google that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, just, I wanted to ask because I'm talking working alongside Lewis. It's such. Um, quite an intense performance from him. He does such a fantastic job in this role because it's not an easy part. Can you just talk about the collaboration process with, with Lewis Gribbin on this show? Yeah, I've just built my drink while I'm on. That's all right. <laughs> That's all good. Uh, the collaboration process with Lewis Gribbin was actually an honour because I've already worked with him before and hmm. we've, uh, we've, we've stayed friends since the last job that we worked together on. I were, only, I were a lot younger when, when I first worked with him. So... 
it was like when I when when we were starting the job, I was looking forward to that and already like knew what it could bring to the table really. So I knew that I were in safe hands as yeah as in like uh working alongside him, do you know what I mean? Mm. Well talking and, um, about him, he's just coming in now, by the way. <laughs> is he here, yeah? Well yeah. I'll let him <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let you tell him how much prayers I've been giving them. Oh, there he is. Hi. Yeah, we were just talking about you. <laughs> oh, are you? Oh, yeah, I know. So, um, he's probably sounds sorry that he's a massive artist. Amazing, isn't he? No, uh, I'll preach to this one, really. No. Nah. But you guys, because well, I was just saying, you guys go back a bit. That must quite help when you're playing characters like this, because they give it's a lot. Of, I guess a lot of trust is required um, in a show like this, and characters and in this kind of environment, I suppose. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, because like when you have to have like be one character that's so like out of the realm of what normality is and you've got one that's so in reality but is still quite weird um you have to have that genuine connection anyway because um it's just a very 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 intense relationship because at first it's like one side doesn't like the other side and then they have to like find a way to get become friends and then tear away and then become to connect but still Mm. kind of like each other overall kind of things so it helped that we knew each other yeah and so i just phone you could just got here lewis i'm just phoning in the deep end we're just throwing questions at you but like you're playing a character here with such ingrained kind of issues how would you because i thought you did a fantastic job it's such a great performance but how would you avoid making it like a caricature you did a one you did a wonderful job on that but is that a kind of tough line to walk as an actor when playing someone like this who isn't quite of this world in some ways um I think a part of it comes down to like, you know, me being a bit of an outsider anyway, at, like in my upbringing, the way I grew up kind of really helped. And I think with, you know, with the good direction I had between with um both Alex Winkler and Alexander Brodsky, who directed it, they they were really good at like keeping me very grounded because I'm quite a naturally energetic person. So it was part of them. And it was also just me like, knowing what it's like to feel like an outsider or like feeling a bit isolated at school and taking all those experiences from my own life and putting it into Danny and and just relieving everything I'm saying sort of thing and mm-hmm. um, so it kind of comes from an authentic place what I'm doing and also as I said just it's down to both Alex the like Alex's directions that really helped and and just looked at allowing me to be more vulnerable and stuff mm-hmm. Yeah, because it doesn't feel like a character. You can maybe just switch on and off. Well, how was it when you heard the word cut? Were you able to just go straight back into Lewis or did it take a, a little moment or two? Um, I never, I don't know if I ever really fully was me. It was a bit weird because I kind of Daniel day lewis it a bit. <laughs> and I was just like, um, I stayed in the Northern accent the whole time. But it wasn't Danny, Danny as in the character which you see. But it wasn't fully me either. So it was like this weird half-breed breed version of either me, like a Leeds version of me mm-hmm. or Danny. So it was like, mm-hmm. it was bizarre. I didn't know who I fully was really when I was, when I was doing it. It was only after we finished where I was like, I couldn't, I was like a whirlwind. I was stuck mm-hmm. in a whirlwind for four months and I couldn't really be myself until it ended. Mm-hmm. Have you, um, Sam, have you ever gone kind of method or, or done thing? Like if you've had to do something with an accent or something, you've kind of kept it up or... Or have you always, have you, are, you, are you quite good at the kind of switching off and switching on part? Uh, yeah, I'd say I am, to be fair. I've never actually kept an accent on. The first job that I worked with Lewis on, I had to, I had to do an accent. Yeah. And it did nothing but and it did nothing but take me out of me for the full uh, six weeks. He got his own back. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's like, what I, got to, I got to my own back on this job. But no, I never really stayed in character. I try to not do that as much as possible. But uh, the job I'm doing at the moment, I'm... Not in character, but like taking it as, um, taking it as serious as possible. Do you know what I mean? I think if you look at the kind of story, you would assume that the character Danny learns the most from Aaron because he's got more to learn, I suppose. But Sam, do you reckon actually it's a two way street? It feels like they're they're both learning quite a lot from each other in this show. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about it today, and I think unfolding is a good term to describe. Like he's trying to unfold himself. And he's struggling, um, but I think uh, Danny's awkwardness and uh, com- like his his confidence because he's not um, familiar to it, what everything else. He's just like brashly confident, and I think that 
that helps Aaron to like unfold and unfold himself a bit and find out who he is. Do you know what I mean? So I think, I think uh, Danny probably needs. I think Aaron probably needs Danny more, mm-hmm. more than anyone thinks. Do you know what I mean? Um, and um, I was going to ask. Well, I'll well, oh, wait. There, yeah, Lewis. I was going to ask because um, I mean, this shows real sort of this is mental health and trauma in young men. How important do you think it is to have a story like this out there? Because these are two boys kind of trying to figure out who they are and their place in the world and sort of mm. coming to the conclusion that maybe they don't know yet and it's okay not to know at that age. Do you think it's important to have a story like that for other young boys and young men out there to watch and resonate with? A hundred percent, because I feel like it's not really a, a subject matter that's fully touched upon still. Like it, it happens every now and then, but it's more like one character going for an incident anyway. And it's uh, just caught up in a deeper drama, but to make it not fully, but like the center focus about these two boys trying to find, become men in a very confusing world that is the normal world. One who is overexposed but doesn't fit in. The other has no clue. Um, I think it's just, it, it appeals to a lot of people, I think. Just like, it appeals to like men who feel like they're more Aaron. They're lad culture, lads who just don't know how to fully be themselves um, or feel like they have to fit in in a certain way or act a certain way or say certain things. Um, but I'm with Danny, it's like a lot of people can relate to feeling like an outsider or feeling like they don't fit in and feeling like I felt as lonely or as desperate or as wanting to connect but not knowing how. I think it's just a show that feels so real um, in times like, like, and especially after like lockdown and getting back into society from even like kind of last year when it was still a bit weird to now where it's like everything's just back to normal. And some people have never fully got back to who they were before lockdown so it's like I think it's just like a huge thing that is like it's very relevant to what's happening but also Mm. I think just men can from both sides from both Aaron and Danny can connect to it yeah yeah Sam do you think there's an issue these days or not just these days but sort of all the time really with boys of that kind of age trying to fulfill this sort of masculinity that perhaps isn't really them that they're in, they're not actually comfortable with but they feel this kind of societal obligation to to be that way yeah mm. <laughs> and that's uh, uh, uh no yeah there definitely is um from probably the ages like from probably like ages like eight, eight, 12 upwards man you, you're um you're looking at certain role models on telly and in like on adverts and stuff like that 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 you think you should sort of mirror mm. but um but no I think uh yeah for a lot of lads I think you do, they do struggle with that but personally I'm comfortable enough for myself like nowadays anyway now that I've got to a certain age I think it gets to a certain you get to a certain age and become comfortable but, but uh you nailed it really mm. Yeah, and Lewis, I was going to ask because we started the the interview of this um, before you before you got here, but because the show's been on telly now, uh, so you've we've now we're privy to the the fantastic reviews and the great audience reactions. How pleased and have you been with the the sort of the way people have taken to this story and to these characters? Uh it's just kind of a bit overwhelming to be honest, because like when we did it, um, I knew the script was good. I I, I realized the script was good when we were making it and stuff, but. I was scared a lot because, you know, um, End of the Effing World and Misfits and Clark and Well, the production company, have done amazing television before this. And, you know, being kind of like very more like out of the whole cast, probably one of the more unknown people. I was very, very like, feel like I'm in the firing line of people hate this or don't like me in it and whatever. But um, just seeing everyone like, on social media coming either directly or just talking about the show with the hashtag or whatever or just the reviews in general the guardian as well because it was one of my dreams to be interviewed by the guardian and i got to do that earlier this like last month to this mm. and then for a five-star review for them it's just like i couldn't believe that it's on un- it's unreal and then every other review most of the reviews have been five and a couple of fours and it's beyond what i thought i thought we'd get maybe one four and i'd be like enough you know and i'm like oh fair enough we got one four but um a bunch of fives is like it's unreal Mm. and and i'm trying to like keep family grounded with all the swirling attention of it 
Um, did you watch the opening episode then? On on did, were you sort of sat down with, with the family or anything to kind of tune in? Yeah. Or, I mean, yeah. How was that? Um. Yeah, it was like I could tell my parents were a bit um emotional at certain points. Mm. They laughed at certain points, which was good. Um, I think they like the fact that it goes from it feels like it seamlessly goes from like either humor, sadness, joy, half like it just all feels too, so seamless. It doesn't feel jarring when it transitions from humorous or a bit more lighthearted to darker and sad. Like they, I, they, they really like that and they're enjoying it so far. We've been watching it two by two mm. as it comes out. Um, I did four in a row last night. <laughs> um, oh, did you? Thank yeah, you. but um, my final because I'm sort of running out of time here. So my final question to both of you. I mean, I know because I've only, as I've sort of said, I've only done four, so I don't actually know if there is any scope if something happens that means it's be impossible for there to be more. But is there? Could there be scope in more somewhere, boy, further down the line, perhaps? I think if Pete, Pete's writing is so unique and so different, and he's already, I think it'd be fine telling me that me telling you that he's already started writing it and started mm. thinking of ideas and I think it could work I mean mm. it doesn't suggest that from where it ends but I think the reality is like you can't have someone who's been trapped in the past for 18 years to just adjust and then it's fine there's so much like you can explore with how he could be mistreated because the real monsters are us as human beings and there's people who and that is such a very naive person and, you know, I think he needs Aaron and Sue or whatever, but he could get a job or something and it could just, he could find someone who just manipulates him again. And I think that could work. And then uh, subsequently, I also think there's more with Sue and Steve's pasts that is, can be explored about their childhood because they were both like um, in the foster situation. And then it becomes unraveled to where, it, where Steve gets to before the start of this one. So I think yeah, I think it could definitely happen, and but it, again, it depends on what everyone thinks. Yeah, well, if, it depends, if it depends on audience reactions, I think that <laughs> so far that's been a, a given because it's been so well received and deservedly so. But guys, that's all we've got time for really today. Um, but thank you so much no for me about the show. I think it's wonderful performances, and if there is more, hopefully we'll be able to catch up again in season two. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, that's time. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!